All right guys, so welcome back to another one here today. Today is August 2nd, so we are in the middle of summer. Today I'm out here drifting uh, for, for catfish. So in the summertime, these fish will come out to the main lake and, uh, and they'll feed on these shad, right? So I'm out here drifting, I just got this planer board. I've got two planer boards, one down rod. This planer board just dumped, so we're gonna reel this guy in and see what we got. And then uh, if we catch a few of them here, we're gonna run to the shore here and I'll cook them up for you guys. Show you a little uh, summertime catch and cook. Using shad for bait because that's what they're eating. Uh, there's really no sense in using anything else. Uh, and they're super easy to catch this time of year. Leave a link below if you guys would like to check out uh, how to catch those summertime shad. All right. Got a pointer board off of there. Fish come out of about 15 feet of water or so. Feels like a pretty substantial fish too. I maybe should have went to get the net, eh? Ooh, that's a perfect eater, guys. So I run 60 pound mono for my leader. That makes it nice because you can grab the fish. And you don't have to mess with a dip net. Circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. So that's a good three, four pound fish there. There we go. All right, so throw this guy in the cooler. That's a nice, clean fish. He's been out here in this big water eating shad. Throw him in the cooler. We're gonna get a couple more. We're gonna head to shore and eat them. All right, guys, so just got spun around, headed back down, and actually the same rod went off, so that's cool. So this is a super effective method here for this summertime fishing is drifting or in my case what I'm doing right here is controlled drifting. There's people out here that just drift around randomly but uh, you can definitely better your odds by uh, by control drifting using your mapping and things like that to, to hit the ledges and the highs and things of that nature so yeah pretty effective little technique out here and you're always moving. I like to keep my boat somewhere around 0.8 mile an hour. So even whenever it's dead calm in the summertime, you've always got a, a little bit of breeze. So this fish doesn't feel too terribly big. And boat lake is horrible today. So this fish doesn't, doesn't feel too terribly big, but uh, we're looking to eat some today, so. Go, another nice little eater. Exactly what we want. Come here, buddy. Oh, they're eating shad heavily, so he's puking up a bunch of stuff. But yeah, there you go. A nice little channel. Throw him in the cooler on ice, and uh, this is all I need to eat lunch today. But uh, we're gonna stay out here and make this last drift and at least finish it out before we go eat. So there we go. All right, so I'm pulling planter boards. And you know, you'll see a lot of guys just pull off the side of their boat or they'll, uh, or they'll just drag straight off the back of the boat. Well, what that does is that doesn't give you a very good spread. Using planter boards uh, will allow you to get a spread. So even though, you know, we're only allowed three rods a piece, I'll just chuck that out there. I usually go about twice the depth I'm gonna be in. So the deepest water I'm gonna be in is 15 foot. Chuck it out there about 30, 40 feet or so. Then simply just hook this planter board to it. Once I run this planter board out, that'll let me with these three rods, you can see the one way, way out there. And this one here will go the same same way. So I'll, I'll be pulling a spread that's roughly 100 foot wide with three rods, having about 30 feet a piece width wise it just ups my odds you know to the guys that are just dragging the 
the length of their boat or right behind their rods. It just makes it that much more uh, that much more efficient. So anyway, going to uh, gonna finish my drift here, guys, and then we're gonna head to shore and uh, and cook up some cook up some fish for you guys. See, I just let the line out. Once it gets out to my desired width, then uh, I'll just uh, throw them in the rod holder and be good to go. There we go, I've got him out. Now once he planes out, you can see that planer board way over there versus that one over there. And uh, you're just pulling that big of a spread basically with the planer boards. So just one little thing, they're fairly cheap and uh, they can really up your odds. All right. Making our way back down the old drift there. And center rod here with no planter board it just went off so we'll reel this fish up here initial hit was pretty strong so this may be a decent fish you know I got it I get a lot of people ask why I don't use the releases on my planter boards and uh, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of show you guys if you guys can see back behind me there's just so much boat traffic that uh, you know if I was to use the the release it constantly get kicked off you know because of all the boat weight so that's a this a fair fish here Ooh. yep that's a fair fish I'm gonna be fighting myself get the net ready and get the net ready He's not huge by any means, but he didn't pull pretty hard. Might as well dip him while I got the net. There we go, guys. Another nice eater fish. They are just so clean this time of year out here. I mean, they're all are eating shad, circle hook right in the corner. Mouth. There we go. That right there is, uh, look how fat that belly is on that fish. I mean, they are just out here just gorging on these shad. So, yeah, nice fish. Now, I've, like I said, I've got no reason to keep another fish. I've got plenty of fish at home. And uh, I've got two in the cooler for our little cook up here, so I'll go ahead and throw that guy back. And I'm about done with my drift, and then uh, we're gonna head in shore here, and uh, we'll cook you up some uh, some catfish, shore lunch style. Oh, all right, guys. So drove back up here uh, out all the boat lake and such, and beached the boat. We're gonna cook up this fish here for lunch. So we're gonna do a fish two ways here. I'm gonna show you. And uh, the first way here is kind of like a, a tuna salad. It's a cold dish, right? So in the summertime, you know, you don't want to be eating a lot of hot food, right? So this is a cold dish. And then the second one is going to be, uh, you guys saw I kept that small little fiddler catfish over the bigger one. I've had a lot of questions about cooking whole catfish. So this small guy here, he's a perfect, uh, perfect size to do a whole catfish. And I'll show you how to prep them and we'll fry them up like that. So go ahead. Dispatch the fish because I just caught them. Um, just cut their gills and threw them over the side of the boat. And we'll go ahead and clean these up. I'll show you guys how I clean these up here right quick. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to make a cut right in front of the dorsal fin. We're just going to come down and just follow that fillet. This is all yellow meat, so there's no need. We're going to cut that off anyway. I'm running out of room on the cutting board, so I'm not gonna flip it. But normally I'd flip it. Okay, there's that filet. And we'll come to this side here. You can see just right on the side of the dorsal. Just make that cut. You can see that line from the ribs. Just come right down. All right, set him aside there. All right, so we'll dress up these fillets here right quick. And all I'm gonna do is just 
remove that yellow meat. You can see that yellow meat right there. Just gonna take that knife, just remove that yellow meat right off. All right, now we're gonna pull the skin off and I'm gonna ride my knife high to uh, take off that red meat. We don't want that red meat. All right, so you can see there, I left all that red meat. I, it's not that I wasted any, it's all that red meat. So we don't want any of that either. And you can see where left is just a nice, clean, white catfish filet. All we have to do here, trim up any little remainder of the, uh, of the yellow meat. And then we're gonna go ahead, cut out that mud vein. Like I said before, guys, it's not that you're wasting fish. It's, uh, you know, because that's what gives your bad taste, so. Same thing here. Ride that knife high. You can see we removed all that red meat. There's no red meat on there. Trim that yellow off. Flip it around. mud vein we're good to go all right so with this small catfish you can see here what this is a maybe a 16 inch catfish this is what I always call fiddlers um, these are well they're I mean they're they're great for whole but by the time you dress them out you don't get any meat on them that's why I never keep them but if you want to go ahead and keep them and do them whole this is a pretty simple method come right behind the dorsal fin with your knife and you can just feel that backbone it makes it real easy just to remove the head right there. You can leave the tail if you want. <laughs> so I apologize guys, my camera died. Um, anyway, I didn't catch it in time. So you remove the head, we cut the tail off. You can leave the tail if you want, my pan's not big enough. And then uh, we just simply just made a cut from the, the stomach towards the anal fin there, cleaned all that stuff out, and there you've got a whole, uh, fiddler catfish that you can fry in your pan. So we're gonna do that the second way too. We're gonna get the skillet hot and uh, we're gonna get to cooking. Whoa, that's crooked. All right. All right, so let's get started here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna boil this fish to cook it and to make it for our tuna salad, right? So. One easy way to do this, um, you know, especially with, since I'm in the boat, I don't want to boil everything over. So I'm just going to go ahead. I got my little pot here, and I've got my fish. I'm going to put that in first, and I'm going to add my water. And I want to boil this fish whenever the water's boiling. I don't want to boil the, the fish in the water. But uh, we'll just add the water that we need. There we go. Add the water that we need, and then we know we don't. We're not going to have a an issue whenever it gets hot. So there we go. We know we need that much water. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to fire up this old cook stove here. Get her cooking on high. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some uh, seasoning to this, and this is going to kind of be similar to like a crab boil kind of deal. We want to give this fish some seasoning. So I got some uh, Critter Glitter by, uh, it's my buddy Mike's seasoning. So I'm going to put just a nice little dosing of that in there. And then with our fish, I'm going to go ahead, and this fish is going to get flaky after we, uh, after we cook it. But I'm going to go ahead and just cut it up into about oh, one inch squares or so. So I like the catfish for this recipe. You can use any white fish uh, you want, but the catfish has a little bit more oil to it than uh, than your other white fish. If you do it with with crappie or um, you know different different real real mild fishes, some you have to add something to it because you end up with a real real dry 
dry salad. So catfish, honestly, is is about my favorite way to do it. Um, but you can definitely do it with with carp, buffalo, uh, you know, anything like that. So just chunked my fish up there. All right, so we got our water all seasoned up real nice and good there. Uh, wait for that to come to a rolling boil. I'm gonna go ahead and throw just a little bit more seasoning right now on the fish just to uh, kind of let it sit there and marinate for just a few minutes while this water boils. It's not gonna take long to boil this water. I probably only got two and a half cups in there. So once this water boils, we're gonna turn or we're gonna throw the fish in and then once it comes back to a boil you'll see the fish will turn white and it's done basically so anyway just just a minute here to uh, let all that happen so our little pot there is rolling we got a rolling boil going in it so I'm just gonna just add this fish in here like I said it'll uh, by about the time it comes back to a hard rolling boil that fish will be about done um, doesn't take long, especially now that I've uh, I've cut it into little pieces. You can already see it turning white. So, like I said, give it time for that that critter glitter to uh, to penetrate the uh, the meat there, and it will not take long. And then once that's done, then we'll uh, then we'll strain it back. So it's been a few minutes there, or whatever. Uh, pots back to a rolling boil, and uh, you know you can see that fish is just just super white. Fish is good and done, so you're gonna kill the heat there on it. And then I'm gonna come over and I've got this little strainer here. We'll strain this fish off. Drain that fish off there. Get all that good seasoning in there. So this fish is is piping hot, right? Uh, and I, you know, like I said, this is a perfect summertime uh, summertime meal having a cold salad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this in the uh, in the beer cooler and just let it uh, let this fish cool down a little bit. And while that's happening there, then we're going to go ahead and cook up this uh, this fiddler catfish for you guys. But you know. Nothing hard about it. Simple. Get this sucker on ice, and it would be good to go. So while that uh, while that catfish is sitting in the cooler, cooling off, let's uh, let's cook up this uh, this whole fried catfish. So I'll be I'll be quite honest, guys. This is definitely not my favorite way to eat the catfish. Um, you know, some people just freak out about it. They love it, but you know, you still got all that yellow meat. You've got that red meat. You've got everything else that you, uh, you know, got to eat around. But I get so many requests for it that uh, that I figured I'd show you guys. You know, I mean, it's a good way to do it. It's just not my favorite. So we got my pan here. Let me reach over here. I forgot one ingredient. And I mean, it. Like I said, guys, it's definitely not bad. Um, but it's just not my favorite way. All right, so uh, got my pan. We're gonna let her get good and hot in here. Now you can use all kinds of oil. I'm gonna very, very lightly blacken this with uh, oil. So I've got some uh, some sesame oil. I like that a little bit better. It gives it a little bit, a little bit of body, a little bit of flavor, right? Then we're gonna take critter glitter because critter glitter is a great blackening seasoning. You guys, uh, if you guys would like to try some of this critter glitter. It's Mullet Man who makes it, my buddy Mike, and I will leave a link uh, down below where you can where you can get it. So, just like any blackening fish here, we'll put this seasoning all over it. And the trick with blackening fish is you want that pan just smoking hot, which is obviously what we have here. So, you can go ahead and take that fish. We'll throw it in there. And that sesame oil smells good with that critter glitter. Just a little bit more of that critter glitter on there. 
and this will not take long guys um, you know this is a smaller fish but the idea is to uh, you know with that blackening seasoning get almost a char to it so we'll let that go so we just did the flip there on the whole catfish and you can see with that, that critter glitter is a good blackening seasoning um, but that's kind of what you're looking for for the flip you can see that the meat is starting to pull apart and crack a little bit so we'll let this other side go so roughly five minutes or so on each side and that fish is done look at that it looks really good nice black and charred to it that meat's just perfectly white all right so that's cool so we'll set that aside here and while that is cooling off we'll get started here on our makings for our salad so I've done a little bit of the prep here at home I've got roughly a third of a small onion here and then I've got some uh, baby grape tomatoes here we'll chop up dice those up give ourselves a little bit of color there and this is a this is something guys obviously that you can do uh, out on the boat there's not not a lot of pressure or not a lot of prep to it um, you know with this salad and like I said it turns out to be great uh, you know in the summer because it's not hot you know that blackened fish is cool and all but it, it's a hot meal you know and in the summertime like a like a nice cool refreshing so I've got and like I said you can kind of judge off of how many people you're feeding right so I did one catfish I used a third of an onion um, I've got one big whole pickle here uh, you know a few tomatoes and you can add you know whatever um, and I like my salad real chunky uh, I like to eat it on on sandwich material you know so that's why I'm not finally finally dicing this uh, stuff up um, all preference but you know you can adjust the uh, adjust the portions accordingly right I don't need to make up a big meal here I just need uh, enough for you know a few sandwiches so anyway we've got pickles and tomatoes and onions and I'm gonna go ahead and just season this stuff up real quick kind of get the juices flowing out of those tomatoes with just a little bit of garlic salt it the humidity has not been kind to a little bit of garlic salt a little bit of pepper hell you could eat that that looks good right there all right so we got our fish cooling off let's see uh, let's see if our fish our catfish is cooled off in the cooler so our fish is cooled off real nice so what I'm gonna do here is just come in with a fork here and just break it up just so where we can get a, a bit of fish in in every bite you know catfish breaks up pretty easy crappie breaks up real easy if you boil it too there we go nice fish I mean that that fish right there you know mmm seasoned with that critter glitter you know that's kinda and that's good tastes like like cheap store-bought crab meat all right so now we're just ready to uh, assemble our salad here I'm taking some some mayonnaise you can use Miracle Whip whatever uh, whatever you prefer Let's see, we got one catfish, one four pound catfish, a third of an onion, one pickle, half a dozen baby tomatoes, and probably 
eh, half a cup of mayonnaise. I, uh, I don't, I don't know. To your liking. Now, like I said, I like to put a little oil in with these white fish, so I'm just gonna take some of that, that sesame oil, not much, uh, you know, half a tablespoon or so, just to kind of give it a little bit of, you know, what you're used to eating uh, tuna salad or, or uh, with salmon or something. And then we'll just add our veggies in there. So the fish is cold, all the vegetables are cold because they just came out of the cooler. And uh, you know, this is this salad is just, it's ready to go. So we'll just mix it up and uh, just kind of see if we need to add any more mayonnaise or kind of how our consistency is with it. Kind of season to your liking. I like that. That's pretty good. Top it off with just a little bit more critter glitter. I'll leave a link if you guys want to get some of that. That is looking good, guys. Nice, chunky, nice, chunky salad. And this took me all of what? I don't know, it took a water longer to boil than it did anything. So, I mean, this is super quick. And uh, it is good to have out in the boat, man. It's fresh. Nice, fresh. So there we go. There's the finished product there. We'll set that to the side here. And uh, like I said, you can eat it however you want. On a bed of lettuce, you can eat it, um, you know, with chips. You can do whatever. But for on the boat, I really like to eat it. on bagels make a sandwich out of it so I've got uh, got some nice nice whole grain everything bagels here and uh, just gonna put those back on the fire for just a little bit just to get them all toasted up and once those are done guys we are going to uh, we're gonna have us a little feast here. Let's dig into this feast I've created here, right? Um, like I said, guys, this is easy, and I, I love cooking out in the boat. You know, this is fun. Uh, and these super simple meals, I mean, you know, you can see I, I brought this from the house, right? Everything else I keep in the cooler in the back of the boat. Uh, there's no preparation really to it. And it, uh, forward and it, you know, it does a, it's fun. So we got a nice chunky uh, salad here. Got my nice toasted bagel there. So we'll just load that bagel just right full. And you guys can see this was uh, this was just one catfish. So, you know, one small catfish, you know, three or four pounder. So uh, if you're doing, you know, even for a, a larger group, just a couple of fish. So there's our nice bagel there. I'm excited about this. I love this, guys. This is so good. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. I'm telling you, you guys do that. You won't be making tuna salad no more. Alright, so we'll get here into the the fish here. So you can see it's cooked real good. Uh, nice flaky, flaky white meat. Get into there, get that skin. The skin's my favorite part. Not too awful bad. That critter glitter, it really, really makes it. Um, really, really makes it. That's good. That's a good way to cook a fish, guys. Um, it's just, you know, the catfish, it kind of goes against everything that I've always preached about cleaning them where you got to get that red and the yellow off because you about can't do it. Whenever you, uh, whenever you cook them whole like that, you know, it's hard to eat around them. But, I mean, I'm going back in. It's good. Um, 
it's just whenever you're used to eating super cleaned catfish, you know, it, you just get a little bit more fishy taste to it. It's definitely good. Um, you know, and you can see it's just peeling right off the bone. It's, it's cooked perfectly, but definitely not bad. It's just not my preferred way to clean or to eat catfish. Like I said, it's just got a little bit more fishy taste to it uh, because you've got that yellow and that red meat in there. But I mean, it's great. This, however, this is awesome. Mmm, just so fresh. All right, guys, I'm gonna finish eating here. I've got a storm moving in in a couple hours, so I gotta think about getting home here. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Uh, I love reading the comments. Let me know what you guys think about these kind of catch cook videos. Uh, they're fun to make. I really enjoy making them, and it's something I do anyway. So it's not that hard to uh, to go through filming them. But yeah, if you enjoyed, hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a like. Um, if you're new here, this is the first video. Consider subscribing. I've got a ton of other videos like this, uh, cooking videos, fishing videos, everything else. So with that, guys, I'm gonna leave you to it. As always, guys, uh, I appreciate the view, and we'll see you all next time.